Do you want to bring Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity to your Hackintosh? And as always in all of my videos, the easiest and fastest way, some solution which gives to your Hackintosh Wi-Fi and Bluetooth without any tweaking and fiddling, which works simply out of the box and for cheap? Well, that's exactly what I will show you in this video. Hi, I'm Teresa from Morgonau.cloud and I help people with Apple computers, Hackintosh builds, Linux servers, simply with computers. If you are new here, then please click that subscribe button and hit the bell next to it so you won't miss any of my future videos. This video is for all Hackintosh users and does not matter if you bought motherboard with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth or without it. By the way, if you built a Hackintosh based on motherboard with integrated Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, you for sure notice it's simply not working. It's quite obvious because all of those stock PC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chips are simply incompatible with macOS. That's why I never recommend to someone who wants to build a Hackintosh to buy the more expensive motherboard with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth integrated on board. It's a waste of money. Buy the same board but without Wi-Fi. Some of them have working single section, but not the other one, but most of them will simply never work. You will still have to simply remove the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip out of your motherboard completely. So that's why a lot of people ask me all the time what I personally recommend to get Wi-Fi and Bluetooth perfectly working in Hackintosh under latest macOS Mojave in our case. On the market, there is a lot of solutions claiming macOS or Hackintosh compatible. I tested some of these, but not all they say was true. So I understand people are confused and don't want to invest into anything non-working. So I always recommend original Wi-Fi Bluetooth modules from real MacBooks in PCI Express adapters. Unfortunately, that's quite expensive for a lot of people. Finally, we found product which is way cheaper and works 100% perfectly and out of the box. It costs just 40 pounds in UK or 45 euros in Germany. It's this little baby. Really very small with two massive antennas and USB 2 header connection and takes only single PCI Express by one. By the way, links where you can buy this 100% macOS compatible Wi-Fi Bluetooth card for your Hackintosh, you can find now in this video description. So I will show you an example on one of my 14 core iMac Pro killer Hackintosh builds based on the Gigabyte Z390 designated motherboard and Intel Core i9-9900K. By the way, this Z390 designated motherboard is by my opinion the best motherboard for Hackintosh ever. Watch my 14 core iMac Pro killer video series to see more about it. Here as a proof you can see my Hackintosh does not have any Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connectivity at this moment. So all you need to do to make Wi-Fi and Bluetooth working is just physically install this card to your system. So I will show you now how to do it. Simply as any other PCI Express card, slide it into the PCI Express socket. Secure it with the screw on the top and just connect the USB connector to your USB 2 header on your motherboard. Then screw in those two antennas. That's all, easy like that. Now just boot the system. So when I will go now to about this Mac and Bluetooth section, bang, I now have working Bluetooth. The same with Wi-Fi, already connected to my network. So as you could see, this card works really out of the box. You don't need to spend dozens of days searching through internet for some magical kernel extensions to make it working. It's simply plug and play because it's using native hardware Apple use in their own computers. So drivers for it are included in macOS Mojave. Simply buy this card, physically install it to your computer and start your computer. That's all. Everything will be working straight away as it should and your Hackintosh will get Wi-Fi and Bluetooth functionality the easiest way. Links where you can buy this Wi-Fi Bluetooth card you can find now in this video description. 
Of course, your internal USB 2 header must be properly mapped, that means enabled for use in the system. So people who are using my initial EFI from my 14 core iMac Pro killer does not have this port enabled because in my build it's used by the Kraken X62 CPU cooler. But don't worry, I think about you and I will prepare this USB port mappings for you soon. Simply, don't buy any scammy products, buy only tested and verified products. And you know already I recommend strictly only components I personally tested and verified. This one I can absolutely recommend. It simply works 100% as it should and out of the box. If you would need some help with Apple Mac, Linux, Windows computer, BSD, server for virtualization, ZFS file server, video editing, fine tuning your workflow or just consulting, you can always get my personal individual support on my website. Links again in this video description. So I hope I made your day again a little better. If so, please click on the like button below. Click also the share button and share this video with your friends so it can help to more people. Don't forget to subscribe to both of my YouTube channels and hit the bell next to it so you will get notifications about my new videos. You can also reach me at my Facebook, Twitter, Reddit or my website. Morgonaut is always here to help and of course don't forget to watch my other videos. So that's all for today, thank you for watching and see you next time my friends.